This is Dimitri Lascaris reporting for the Real News Network from Montreal, Canada. According to a new study, methane from the extraction and use of fossil fuels may have been, quote, severely underestimated, close quote. The research indicates that natural or biogenic emissions of fossil methane that seep out of deeply held reserves make up a much smaller fraction of the global increase in methane emissions than previously thought. This means that the levels of fossil methane in the atmosphere are likely being driven by the methane escaping as coal, oil, and natural gas are mined, drilled, and transported. The findings of the study are particularly worrisome because methane is a powerful greenhouse gas with a global warming potential of up to 80 to 100 times greater than CO2 in a 20-year time frame. Scientists say this is the critical time period during which the world must take sweeping action to prevent irreversible damage from climate change. Now here to discuss the study with us is ecologist Robert Horth. The David R. Atkinson Professor of Ecology and Environmental Biology, Dr. Horth is the founding editor of the journal Biogeochemistry and served as editor-in-chief for more than 20 years. Thanks for joining us today, Dr. Horth. Pleased to be with you. Thank you. So first of all, could you tell us about the essential findings of this study, uh, Dr. Horth, and, and please talk to us a bit about the methodology that its authors employed. Sure, it, it, it's an important paper. For, for background, we, we've known for 20 years, that at, at the end of the 20th century, about 30% of all the methane that is emitted to the atmosphere has come from ancient fossil sources. And, and we knew that from the measurement of the average amount of radiocarbon-14 that's naturally in that methane. The up, up until this new study, and a previous one by the same lab, uh, the Petrenko lab at the University of Rochester, uh, most scientists had assumed that of that uh, methane that's coming from these ancient fossil sources, some of it was coming from natural geological seeps, and some of it was coming from the fossil fuel industries, oil, gas, and, and coal. What the new paper shows, they, they measured, uh, they took cores of ice from ice sheets where they could determine when the ice was laid down. Uh, they extracted the methane from that ice. They, they need about a, a ton of ice per sample. And then they again measured the amount of uh, C14, the radiocarbon methane that is in that. And what, what they have determined is that uh, over virtually all of the last uh, 10,000 years or so, right up until the time of the Industrial Revolution, uh, there was no methane to speak of coming from natural geological seeps. The methane sources naturally over all of that time period are coming from wetlands and lakes and sources of that sort. So, so what that means is that we uh, were underestimating uh, the methane source as of the end of the 20th century and, and, and more recently. Uh, of that 30% of the total flux, uh, none of it's coming from natural seeps probably, or very little. It, it's mostly from the fossil fuel industry. And so just to be clear, according to the study, what is the uh, degree to which we have been underestimating methane emissions from the fossil fuels industry? This increases our estimate of what the fossil fuel industry would be by, uh, say, 40 to 50 percent, 45 percent, something like that. So it's, it's a big increase. And, and there are other reasons to believe it. it it's the, the new finding is, is consistent with, uh, I think, an increasing body of literature of measurements made on the ground, too, suggesting that uh, many people have been underestimating the importance, particularly from the oil and gas industry. Uh, since this study was published, some have observed that there is a positive side to the, this news in that the study's results mean that there is a greater opportunity to cut methane em emissions. What are your thoughts on that? Well, yeah. I mean, it's, 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 not, it's not positive that the uh, fossil fuel industries are contributing so much, but, but sure, if we recognize they're the source, we, we can cut it back. It's not easy, however, to cut back on the emissions from the fossil fuel industry without, uh, without getting rid of fossil fuels, quite frankly. I mean, I, I think the best evidence at the moment, say, is that the natural gas industry globally is a major, major uh, driver of these emissions. And uh, you know, my research and that of many others suggests that uh, somewhere in the neighborhood of about three and a half percent of the natural gas that's developed in North America is emitted to the atmosphere unburned as methane. So that's a fairly small percentage, three and a half percent. Most of it we're getting to market and burning. And, and yet that three and a half percent is, is the magnitude that we're talking about. It's a huge global flux and globally important in terms of climate change. Can we reduce that 3.6 to 
1.8, maybe, uh, but it's not easy. So I, th I think really what this is, is a, another call for why we need to move away from fossil fuels. And you mentioned just a moment ago, your, your prior work in this area. For those not familiar with your work, Dr. Horace, you and your colleague, Anthony Ingrafea, cut against the grain at the dawn of the fracking boom in 2011, uh, publishing a study finding that fracking in the Marcellus Shale could do more to exacerbate global heating than mining coal. Uh, you and Dr. Ingrafea were heavily attacked by the gas industry for your work. Among other work that you have published since, you also authored a paper last year uh, which found that since the use of fracking, shale gas has increased in its share of global natural gas production and has released more methane into the atmosphere. Do you feel that this new study on methane emissions vindicates the work that you and Dr. Ingrafea have done in, on this issue over the past uh, number of years? I don't know if I'd use the word vindicate because uh, I don't really feel like we've uh, been attacked, but but sure, you know, the, the paper that uh, Professor and, and Graffi and I put out is uh, just a little under nine years ago. It was the first ever paper where anyone had looked at how much methane might be emitted from using shale gas and what it meant in terms of its climate uh, ramifications. And, and we said in the paper, you know, the data which were available to us, we we're using unpublished data from industry sources and from the U.S. Environmental Protection Agency. Uh, the data were not easy to verify, so you know, our conclusions were uh, strongly uh, qualified. We said that what was needed is to get better data, but if our findings were to hold up, then yes, indeed, the methane emissions uh, from developing shale gas would more than uh, uh, rectify the, uh, more, more than offset the carbon advantage, the CO2 advantage from, from switching from coal to natural gas. When you burn natural gas, you emit less carbon dioxide than coal, but you emit a lot more methane. And since methane is, uh, you know, roughly 100 times more powerful as a greenhouse gas, that, that offsets it. So we, we postulated that nine years ago, and, and what we hoped would happen has happened, and that is that uh, hundreds of other scientists have gotten involved. There are now uh, well over uh, 1,400 peer-reviewed papers published in this area, all in the nine years since our study. And, you know, they don't all agree, but the, the science has been moving towards a, a consensus pretty strongly over the last few years. I, I think the, uh, the the number I threw out a bit ago, 3.5% of the methane uh, that's produced being leached to the atmosphere is is strongly supported by most of the literature now. And, the, and this new paper, yeah, it's, it's entirely consistent with that view. So, so I'm, I'm feeling uh, feeling good about the science. I'm feeling bad about climate change and the, and the contribution of, of the fossil fuel industry to it. But it, it means that we not only need to get rid of coal, we need to get rid of natural gas as well as quickly as we can. Uh, lastly, uh, Dr. Horth, you, you, the climate debate in general has changed a lot in the United States since your 2011 study came out. Uh, Barack Obama fully backed the fracking boom and concerns over methane got swept to the side until late in the administration's second term. Under the current administration, we have seen a rather uh, vigorous and unchecked support for the fossil fuels industry. What do you make of the debate in the Democratic Party presidential primaries today from the perspective of dealing with this problem, uh, and particularly the problem of fracking and methane emissions? Do you think that this is a sub subject within the debate that's been given sufficient attention? No, I mean, climate change in general hasn't gotten sufficient attention in the debate. It's it, uh, the, the last debate uh, barely touched on climate. The, the debate uh, the week before had more on climate. There's a pretty pretty strong contrast. Uh, if we go back to the Obama administration, you're correct. The, the President Obama more or less endorsed fracking and, and saw natural gas as a bridge fuel. I think he was wrong. He was changing his mind towards the end, and I, I gave an invited briefing to senior staff at the White House uh, in May of his final year. I think they were strongly coming around, but of course, President Trump sees uh, uh, no worry from climate change, and, and there's no fossil fuel he doesn't like. So. Uh, you know, the Democratic Party really needs to to come forward and, and with candidates that address that. And I think we have a, a pretty sharp, uh, the, the candidates have said enough to show us that they, that they uh, there's a divergence of, of views. Uh, uh, Elizabeth Warren and Bernie Sanders clearly have opposed uh, fracking, understand that, that methane's a problem, understand that natural gas is not a bridge fuel and we need to move on. They've clearly said that. Uh, Mayor Bloomberg, uh, Pete Buttigieg, uh, uh, Joe Biden, not so much. They, they they tend to fall back on this language still that maybe natural gas is a bridge fuel and they have not uh, 
been critical of fracking at all. So, so the uh, the Democrats have a clear choice. Well, we've been speaking to Dr. Rob Korth of, about a new study uh, relating to the uh, emissions of methane from the fossil fuels industry, showing that they have been vastly underestimated. Thank you so much for joining us today, Dr. Horst. Thank you for your interest. Appreciate it. And this is Dimitri Lascaris reporting for the Real News Network. Thanks a lot for watching. Appreciate it. Uh, but do us one more solemn favor. Hit the subscribe button below. You know you want to. Stay up on the videos.